other uh, few days. Now, as it stands now, the crisis in Sudan is taking a different dimension. And uh, even as the world leaders uh, are trying to find a very lasting solution to the crisis, we're told that uh, uh, some blocks, Western blocks, you may want to call it, are uh, taking interest. And uh, just as some persons will explain that once you have crisis in any nation on the surface of the earth, uh, you can be rest assured, you can be best assured that uh, uh, interest will come in. So as it stands in Sudan now, we understand that uh, the United Nations, <laughs> it is an allegation though, United Nations uh, through, or the United States of America through the United Nations is taking an interest. And also we understand that uh, uh, Russia is also taking an interest. So these are the two things that we're going to be considering today on the program, Africa Discuss. Let's look at uh, the external influence factor. Now, if this comes uh, to bear, can we ever have an end to the crisis in uh, Sudan? Well, to discuss all this uh, this afternoon, uh, I want to mo most sincerely appreciate uh, my very big brother, not just a friend, a big brother now, somebody that is so interested when it comes to uh, international issues, most especially when it has to do with uh, conflict resolution. Please join me to welcome uh, if you like, you call him Comrade. If you like, you call him Mr. Now, you know, Wita Ibutako, a foremost and, of course, a very renowned uh, international conflict resolution expert. So, you're welcome to the program. It's a pleasure. Uh, Good afternoon, I, viewers. I know it took you very, very <laughs> time to come here. So I mostly time. appreciate your effort this afternoon. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Thank All you. right. So, just like what we said, that uh, the crisis in Sudan is ongoing. and. Uh, is uh, you know, escalating into a different dimension now. We're beginning to see external influence into uh, the insurrection. Yes. Now, if we have this situation, uh, have we seen any end in light, uh, you know, very soon in the crisis in Sudan? Mm. <laughs> I, I took a, a deep breath. <laughs> There's no respite in sight. Uh, sadly, for Sudan, sadly for the Helpless, hapless citizens of Sudan. Those who, who want their new democracy. Those who want their new progress for their country. Sadly for them, that's bad news. I don't see any respite coming easily. Why I say that is that the, the war in Sudan is a prosy war. Use the word prosy. Prosy in the sense that there are a lot of interests. Going by what you said in your introductory you know, this thing, that there are a lot of external factors responsible for the conflict in Sudan, you know, and uh, quite unfortunately, the two warring factor, factions, General Boham and Dagalo, mm -hmm. the, the, General the, Dagalo the, now. and the other, you know, both of them are not patriots. They are not, uh, you know, after the soul and progress of Sudan. They are not. They have to have their own parochial interests. And uh, why am I saying it? Because of their antecedents. You know, sadly for Sudan, there was one general, Oman Pacha, you know, uh, who, who brought insanity. I use the word insanity. General Pacha brought insanity into Sudan. He ruled for almost 30 years, a, a ruthless, malevolent military ruler. You know, Bashar was there for several years. And, and a lot of humanitarian crisis under his uh, rule. He was so brutal, he was so malicious, he was so anti-people that international forces had to ensure his how ouster. And how was Bashar removed? Bashar was removed using these two guys. The, 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 the current uh, actors. Uh, Dagalo and Farah. Dagalo. Yeah. They were... They were... Uh, uh, Bashar's boys, mm. so to say. Mm. They were his boys. <laughs> because while Bashar was there for several years, he, he brought a policy of uh, disengagement of military forces. He, that's, he has a way of separating them from each other. A kind of rule and divide and rule. So that no, sin no one single uh, military unit was stronger than the other. It was a process that he put in place to prolong his stay in power. Mm. So at the end of the day, 
the way the, the Western powers who are interested in removing uh, uh, Abacha had to use these two guys. <laughs> they were used. And those people ensure they came together and Basha was overthrown. Okay. As we speak, Basha is in prison and he's not only in prison, he has uh, influence even from prison. And there have been cases, you know, investigations have shown that he's even support one of the one of the actors, principal actors. Mm. So the war in Sudan is no respite in sight. A lot of things involved. Maybe as we go, I will explain them. Okay. A lot of things now, but, but before we start looking at uh, uh, here, lots that, that is involved in the crisis in Sudan now. Now, uh, General Dadalu now, who was uh, you know brought in uh, to oversee the rapid uh, uh, response, response forces. Force. Uh, he was brought in by his superior, by his ogre, so to say, <laughs> General Fa Fa Faran. Faran, yeah. Faran now. Yeah, yeah, now, yeah. Yeah, now, uh, 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 should we want to say here that uh, maybe General Faran uh, made uh, the biggest mistake uh, of his uh, uh, being uh, the head of state uh, in Sudan? He didn't do any mistake because uh, the General uh, Abu Fatai Boram needed the services of the General Dagalo to overthrow. Uh, Mohammed uh, Abasha. Mm. And when you were they had an uh, alliance, they had agreement. And one of the uh, agreements is that the militia forces that are with uh, Dagalo, they'll be integrated into the Sudanese uh, armed forces. And that was the major problem that caused this crisis. Bohem refused, reneged on the promise, give it to Dagalo, you know, the promise of reintegrating those uh, military um, uh, militias into the Sudan armed forces. He reneged. In the presence of reneging, renege, that was when Dagalo now said, okay, I want to fight for power. I want to ensure I get number one seat. It, 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 it is a supremacy battle mm. between those two men. So uh, that, that's what I said earlier, that the, these characters are not interested in the future of, of Sudan. Yeah, but, but when you say so, uh, Abdul Fatai Baran now mm. is uh, of, the, of, of the opinion that uh, the uh, Sudanese uh, government should uh, be returned back to uh, popular rule, democratic rule and all that, within the next uh, two years, so to say. Why General Dagalo is saying that, no, that two years is too short of a time, but it has to be uh, within the next uh, 10 years. Now, one thing that is basic to these two generals is that uh, uh, they understand and they appreciate the fact that uh, Sudan as a nation has to be returned back to civilian rule. So if we say all this, can we still say that they probably don't have the interests of the Sudanese at heart? They don't have the, pro, the, 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 the prosperity, political prosperity, economic prosperity, social prosperity of Sudan, they don't have in mind. Because give it that background. We have those years on them. These people, these guys are bloody people. Their hands are soiled with blood. They are not patriots. I said it earlier. Mm. So, so, and uh, they are, they are, the struggle is a supremacy struggle, mm. power struggle. And uh, you know, okay, why since Bowen has been at the helm of affairs, why has he not instituted a program of return to civil, civilian rule? I'm asking you, mm. <laughs> why has he not done that? All these few years he has been in power. What is presenting General Ab Ab Abdul Fatai Boham? from conceptualizing or putting in motion mm. a civilian program. He has not done that. In other words, why now? Why now? Why is he saying that now? So he's a, and this external factor, external force. In fact, as I speak, I, 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 the United States is, uh, you know, is not too comfortable with uh, Abdul Fatah Boham. Mm -hmm. Because the promise was this. After the overthrow of Omar uh, Abasha, you saw agree that they should start a civilian, return to civilian rule. Because Abasha was very dictatorial. His reign painted, his, his reign was so draconian. In fact, International uh, Court of Justice was even looking for him at the time. So immediately after he was his ouster, just of Abasha, it was the position of the United States that let's start a civilian rule after all the bloody years and you know. But, General uh, Afatai uh, Boham has been slow. He has not displayed display vision. Mm. He has not displayed mission to return the country to civilian rule. Mm. 
and, and you don't blame alone. There are forces. That is what I said. I said it's a prosive war. Mm. Egypt is close by. Chad is close by. And remember, the Nile, the country is in the Horn of Africa. It is both Sudan and Egypt that control the Nile. You, the international power they flow to the line, mm. to the Nile. Mm. The Nile is a power economy interest. <laughs> mm. Apart from the gold that is in uh, Sudan, that Nile, that that strait, that passage, the River Nile. The River Nile. Yeah. It's a it's a powerful economy weapon. Because you cannot fly, you must your vessel must pass through the river now. The river now. All right, now you, you so must... that, 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 that makes Sudan uh, an, an interesting, an interesting partner place to fight for. <laughs> to fight for. <laughs> Apart from the gold, mm. the country is watered with gold. Okay, ask me what what is in Sudan? <laughs> Sudan doesn't have oil like Nigeria. They don't have other fantastic natural resources, but they have gold. You know what it may go. Uh, and that brings us to want to ask a question now. Because um, uh, a while ago, you said that uh, the United States seems not to have been too... No, they've been saying it that uh, after time, uh, Bahamas have been slow. Yeah, but, but, but I think a recent uh, revelation now suggests that uh, through the United Nations now, uh, that uh, they are willing to support uh, Abdul Fattah Baran uh, so that uh, he can institute a civilian rule in Sudan. But again, we have the factor of uh, the uh, second in command now, the Dagalo, General yeah, Dagalo. Dagalo yeah. that, uh, the uh, he's said to be very rich in uh, the exploration of gold. Yeah, that is why he's a bloody man. And, uh, His hands are full of blood. I also understand that, uh, uh, what's the name now, that uh, Russia. Russia is, has an interest. <laughs> has an, that that yeah. they're already supporting him. Yeah. Now, the question I want to ask here, now, do we uh, see the possibility of maybe uh, the crisis in Sudan uh, is more or less like an extension of what is going on between Ukraine and uh, Russia. Uh, mm -hmm. Bearing in mind uh, that United, uh, United Nations is on one side, and of course uh, Russia is on one side. Can we, can we see that way? Because, from the, uh, ro 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 the Russian-Ukraine crisis? Uh, yes, Russia, Russia is supporting Dagalu, and of course the uh, United Nations is also trying to support uh, Abdel Fattah Baran. What I see clearly, yeah, at the international level, what they play, the chess they play, the chess that's been played at the international level is uh, the chess of uh, relevance. Each country wants to be relevant. Even as, uh, you know, Vladimir Putin is having, is, uh, is more or less regretting his venture mm. into Ukraine. Mm. He's still spreading his tentacles. He still wants to have a bite in what is happening uh, in Sudan. He's supporting Dagalo. Yeah. He, they have, they have, okay. Who, who is arming these warring factions? Who the, gives ammunition? Who, who gives the ammunition? It's the same, it's the same international players. It's a game of chess. Brutal, mindless chess playing. That doesn't have human feelings. They're not interested. It's just unfortunate that it's happening. You is know, it really just a fight for relevance or a fight for relevance uh, and, to, and to grab from the economy? Yeah, resource control. It's resource control. I'm not told about the nine. The nine is like what uh, River Niger is to Nigeria. <laughs> the nine. Sudan has the same uh, a chunk of the nine. The nine is at the boundary now. Yeah, boundary yeah. between Sudan and Egypt. Yeah. And Egypt, if you, if you remember the Suez Canal crisis of 1967, when uh, the then Egyptian president, uh, Jamal Abdel Nasser, was around. So what did the first world crisis? What, what led to the crisis? Because of the Nile. The fight for... You, you remember those days in our history books? They say no Nile, no Egypt. Mm. You know, we have class theory or there about. Mm. I still remember. Mm. No Nile, no Egypt. The Nile is a crucial issue. So international players are in, are, are in Sudan. Not for the interests of the country, but for the interests. So, and uh, if there's going to be any respite, it's for the United States as a rude role to play. Mm. United States, because United States helped in the holster of Amanhe Bashar. Bashar. So, United States as an, if United States want the crisis to end within some given period, it will go down. All right. So the Just for them to, 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 to put their, 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 their legs on the table. Mm. Just like what Nikita Khrushchev did the United Nations. Mm. 1964. Put your leg on the table 
to, 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 to prove a point. International, you know, international force. Now, can, we, 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 can the U.S. do that? Of course, the U.S. is not going to do that alone now. Can the United Nations do that now? Oh. Uh, bearing in mind that uh, uh, the position, the posture of uh, Russia uh, supporting uh, Dagalo, uh, uh, with what is going on between Ukraine and, and, and <laughs> Russia, do you think the United Nations has the capacity? You see, uh, the issue of uh, United Nations, the issue of uh, Ukraine, uh, United States, these countries, they are superpowers. United States is a superpower. Ukraine is superpower. Uh, Ukraine, Russia, Russia is a superpower. superpower. So, and uh, who controls the United Nations? <laughs> U.S. United States. And, and the headquarters of is, is is in New York, across the... The, the lagoon in New York. So, uh, uh, why does it look as if each time we look at what is going on with uh, the United Nations and the United States, uh, when it, re re it refers to another country that seems to be a member of this security? You know, this whole thing comes from the security, security council. council. Now, why is it that there seems to always be this fear? Uh, what is going on? Mm. Which fear? Fear for what? Uh, when the I superpowers. Fear now, the superpowers want to control the world. Okay, what is causing the Cold War between Washington and Beijing? It's, it's, it's the manipulations to control the resources of the world, to, control, like, to extend their zone of influence in international politics. That is what is happening. So if you look at uh, Russia, that is misadventure, whatever I put in misadventure in Russia, mm. and you see Brigana is spreading his legs into Sudan. Know that, 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 that there's something more than the ordinary. Mm. They want to want to control what is happening in Sudan, but I think United States has an upper hand to bring multi-democracy, um, multi-party democracy into mm. Sudan. Sudan. That's an upper hand to do that. They will do that by prevailing on uh, General Afata Boham. Mm. But the guy who is fighting like hell too, and he's not alone. He's being supported. <coughs> But I'm sure, if not, as I said, if United States wants to put his feet, mighty feet, just as United States has put his feet down in Ukraine, peace will return to Sudan. Okay. All right. So That's let's um, uh, begin to see more uh, visuals now as uh, it relates to the ongoing crisis in, in, in Sudan. Uh, we see that uh, uh, lives are being affected. Uh, ceasefire have come and gone. One, the first ceasefire, the second ceasefire. And of course, uh, we have uh, uh, some nationals that are still being killed on a daily basis in Sudan. Now, how can this uh, crisis be eventually brought to an end is what we're going to be looking at uh, later on on the program. Uh, in as much as we are still looking at uh, the external influence uh, factor. Because uh, even before the war, the insurrection now, if you like now, before it started, some persons already envisaged that uh, uh, what will happen in Sudan soon is going to be uh, a war of interest, and of course uh, that's already playing out now between uh, General Abdel Fattah Baran and uh, also uh, the man that is popularly known as uh, General Dagalo. Dagalo. That's uh, the head of uh, rapid uh, support forces, forces yeah. in Sudan. And uh, so it's a fight of two titans, uh, you may want to say, uh, a fight between superior and. Uh, uh, eh, 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 the, the, the ogre and the, the boy now, <laughs> if you want to say that. The ogre and the boys. So, so at the end of the day, who wins the fight is a very big question. All right, so we'll take a short pause now. So when we return back, we're going to be looking at uh, best ways, how we can uh, eventually make suggestions uh, for Sudan so that uh, they can end uh, the crisis. We'll be right back. All right, thank you so much. The program is still African Discourse on Independent Television with Evan Sunokogi. And uh, we do have Nowita Igbotako on the show today, and a renowned international uh, conflict resolution expert looking at the crisis in Sudan and, of course, uh, discussing uh, the external factor issue. Uh, that seems to be a big problem in Sudan. So even if uh, the two warring parties in Sudan decide to end uh, the crisis, they decide to end the insurrection. In other words, even if Abdul Fattah Abaran and uh, General Dagalo decide to shed their sword, would the external interests also think along the line? Bearing in mind 
uh, what is stand to gain, and of course, uh, what is stand to lose in Sudan. All right, so I will start that now with that, that question, Noita uh, Ibutako. Uh, Even if, if these two generals now say, okay, we are done, let's come back home. It's a country we're talking about here. What about the external interest factor? <laughs> uh, what uh, uh, Dagalo and uh, Durham and uh, Boham probably did not see now, have not seen. Mm. Even, even after, if they agree, for instance, mm. to let peace reign, mm. the international forces will not go away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're going to be a recurring decimal. It now depends on how they play the game. So give or take, the best option is for them to lay down their arms and embrace uh, peace. Because, as, as we know, no matter how, how protracted the conflict is, mm. you know, you still have to come back to the, to the dialogue table. Mm. You know, given the horror of this uh, Second World War, Nazism, Tojoism, you know, you know, fascism from Italy, Tojoism from uh, Japan, mm. Nazism from Germany, at the end of the day, they come down to discuss. And one of the results of the breaking coming together is United Nations. So, in conflict resolution, no matter how the crisis, you cannot solve crisis on the battlefield. Crisis must still be solved on the table, on the conference table. Mm. So, I want to crave the indulgence of the, of the bloody generals. I call them bloody generals. Their hands are, are stained with blood. They are not patriots. I'm, I'm emphasizing it. They are not messiahs that Sudan needs. It's quite unfortunate. After the horror caused by uh, Habasha, after the whole years of waste, years of torture, years of misplacement caused by Bashar, only for these two guys now be aligned themselves to be used by international forces. It's unfortunate. Mm. And Egypt is interested. Mm. If you remember what happened in Egypt, you know there was a democratic uh, government uh, headed by Mohamed Morsi mm. in Egypt. Mm. But when that government, and you remember what happened before Mame, the government my mama Morsi came to help in Egypt after that bloody revolutionary struggle, mm. which was championed by civil society forces. Yeah. We now uh, brought multi party uh, uh, politics into, into Egypt. Yeah. But the other day, Morsi betrayed the Egyptian people. Mohamed Morsi became president, he will now start coming with the Islamic agenda. Anyway. So, so okay. wh wh why I'm saying this, mm. I, I know where I'm going. Mm. Because Muslim was going with the Islamic agenda, did that government had to fall? Who assisted in following that government? It's the United States. Because their, their interests were being threatened by Islamic uh, fundamentalists. Now, so now, if the United States could, 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 could bring out its might to ridicule, to isolate and destroy Mohammed Morsi in Egypt, can't the United States do the same thing in Sudan? Mm. They can. So the whole news lies with the United States to lower the temperature. Not that they can lower the temperature. They can prevail on Boran. They, they are the suppliers of the ammunition. So, oh boy, we are the ones supporting you. Play our card. And there will be peace. All right. So, so the thing lies on the United States to, you know, to manipulate the process. And then there will be peace. They can control these boys. They can control Dagalo. They can control them with mind. Okay, look at what the United States is doing in, in, in Ukraine. Is this uh, Vladimir Milinsky, uh, the Zelensky that is fighting that war? It's the U.S. It's the United States. <laughs> those, are, those are some of the allegations. Uh, uh, no, that is the fact in international politics. We yeah. see it. Yeah. But, 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 uh, so uh, U.S. has a major talking uh, interest. Pra pragmatical, pra pragmatic uh, steps uh, to bring peace to Sudan. Yeah. United States has a major role to play. Okay, now, uh, we all know that uh, the U.S. will never, never support anything in as much as they tend to look at issues democratically now. But uh, you and I know when it comes to relig religious issues, uh, anything that seems to be Islamic in nature. Yeah, they, that's why they, they, that's they, they push no away by Mosi in Egypt. Mm. Now, uh, Sudan, we're talking about Northern Sudan. Yes. Here now. now, before South Sudan we went away, one of the biggest issues that uh, the two uh, nations yes. had was, was a religious war. war. The Northern Sudan is believed to be uh, predominantly Muslim. Muslim. So why the Southern Sudan is believed to be the, predominantly the, the, Christians, Christians and, and some other uh, religious uh, sects. And animists and what have you. Now, uh, the Northern Sudan has gone their way now. And we Saturn have the Sudan. Northern Sudan. The crisis is still there. Now, uh, don't you think the Northern Sudan now need to know that, hey, let us <laughs> use religious approach now. I mean, 
Islam is a major yeah, 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 religious you know, city yeah. in northern Sudan. So even if maybe the U.S. may not want to support anything that is Islamic in nature, can't, can't these two generals come together and uh, shelf their, 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 their sword now? I've said it, and I want to reiterate. Mm. These two guys are not messiahs. They are not the political uh, redeemers that will bring prosperity to Sudan. Yet the antecedent is very clear. They are bloody men. They serve Muhammad Hamacha, uh, Muhammad uh, Abasha. Abasha. They serve him to the end. It was when uh, Abacha was becoming a, a pariah. Tyrannical. Tyrannical. The United States and Kosei, hey, man, we have to remove this guy. And that was, and that was the United States do. They want to remove somebody, they use somebody around you <laughs> to remove you. So they now say, oh boy, Dagano, what are you doing there? They call them. <laughs> they join forces and chase uh, Abacha, Abacha away. away. And, and, so, and that's why I say, the United States is not too happy that. Uh, uh, General Boham has not been able to return the country to multi-party democracy mm. because of his own self interest. Now, when you say multi-party democracy now, uh, I think what General Boham is actually trying to uh, preach is that let uh, Sudan have a democratic rule. Uh, maybe even if it's a two-party system, for the fact that it's no more military in nature, uh, you know, let's, let's take it up from there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I said it earlier that uh, whether they continue with the nonsense, because it's nonsense, what uh, Dagolo and the other guy is doing is nonsensical to the spirit of African world. Mm. It's good the spirit of African prosperity. It's good of African brotherhood. You know, they are there for their parochial interest. And as I said, if eventually they, they let go peace and, and let peace be in Sudan, the international forces will not run away. They will not disappear. <laughs> as long as there is a nine there. Mm. It's an issue. River nine. There's a portion to Sudan. There's a portion to Egypt. Mm. So as long as there is gold in Sudan. In Sudan. In Darfur and other places in Sudan. <laughs> they will not go away. They will find a way to find their level. In fact, uh, the present government, uh, Afata Bohan, he has a very fantastic relation with uh, General Assisi in Egypt. Mm. They have close relationship based on how they came to power. So all these forces are there. So the, the, the best interest of Sudan is for peace to come. Mm. But as I said earlier, I don't see peace coming easily because there are a lot of protracted issues. But I think the United States can play a major role. The United States under George Bush Sorry, uh, Joe, Biden, Joe Biden. Biden should play uh, you know, a major role. Mm. And that has a way of playing their role. Mm. That's a way of forcing their boys to listen to them. <laughs> is yeah, that they are their boys? this time Russia is involved? It, it, what, even if Russia is involved. Will Russia ever listen to the US? Uh, that's a big question. Uh, 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 but if America is. We're talking about might here. Yeah, well, we're talking about might. Uh, America uh, has uh, a bigger hand. Bigger influence in, in the United in, in Nations. Sudan. Apart from Sudan, United Sudan. Let, let's leave it to United Nations now. Now, with what is happening between Russia and Ukraine, Russia is not is not listening to the United Nations. It's not even listening to America. So, uh, is it in Sudan now that Russia will not listen to the U.S.? Uh, you know the, the because we are talking the about war, interest here. Yeah, the, the, war, way, the way the United Nations, the way the U.S. has interest through the United Nations, that's the way Russia also has interest now. The point I'm making is this. The international players will always appear. They always appear. But at the end of the day, it depends on who is at the center. And whether you like it or not, imperialism will continue. You understand? Mm. Because their interest in Sudan, they won't let it go. That night, nice. that's where they pass. There are big visas that's where they, to the Mediterranean Sea, that's where they pass. So the the, the thing continues. Talking about influence, the in, in the Ukraine uh, the Ukraine uh, uh, Russia, Russia war. war it's a different ball game. Mm. Russia is is fighting directly against uh, Ukraine, mm. invading Ukraine. Mm. But what we have in Sudan is a different thing. If 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 the central government could, could take over Khartoum, military installation and the rest, Tagalog would not be there as a rebel guy if they cannot completely wait the guy out. Mm. 
So America has the power to do that. If America can, can, can lead NATO and bring in the kind of humiliation that is happening to Vladimir Putin, remember the other day, the Kremlin was attacked. The Crimea. The Kremlin, the yeah. seat of power yeah. in Moscow. Mm. It has never happened. Upon this might of the, of the Russian uh, Federation, a, a drone appeared in the Kremlin. A drone. It's unthinkable. Mm. That, right. that is the greatest threat. So if uh, that could happen with the interest of the uh, uh, United States, it's a prosy war. It's not necessarily that it's the war in, in Ukraine and with NATO forces. <laughs> so if, 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 they, uh, if they can bring that kind of might to bear in Sudan, yeah. They can, they can dislodge Dagalo and put into a ferry ferry. Okay, this is uh, Abdul Fatai Baran. <laughs> yeah, now. yeah. That's uh, the head mm, of uh, mm, the military uh, mm. junta. He's so close to our Sisi. Uh, yeah. The, the Egyptian uh, president. And uh, it's, um, I think uh, this was one of uh, the visits uh, he made uh, to the United Nations now. Uh, okay. All right, so now let's, let's uh, look at, uh, because we are trying to suggest ways here yes. that uh, this whole. Uh, insurrection can be brought down because uh, people are being killed on a daily basis. Uh, very, uh, you know, people that are not, they don't, they don't understand what's going on. They, they, they don't know what is happening. Understand. All right, so from your own point of view, which best approach now? We have tried to, uh, you know, analyze that uh, they should understand that uh, in the first place, they belong to one religious sect, yes. the Islam, which is a major sect in the northern uh, Sudan. Uh, so if that approach uh, fails, which other approach, uh, Dr. Uh, Ibutako, Mr. Ibutako, now, which other uh, approach do you think uh, these warring leaders in Sudan can uh, bring? Well, what, as I said, no matter how protected the war, mm. any conflict, look at, uh, you know, historical instances. After First World War, they come to the table, it produced United Nations, and several other crises across the world. After the, the declaration and all that. There'll be amid, amnesties, mm. peace, and all that. So I think the best way is for you to lay down their hands to remember their country. The best way is for them to remember their country and think of the interests of the ordinary Sudanese mm. who do not know what is happening. Mm. But as I said, unfortunately, these people are bloody men. Bloody men that don't care about the, about the health of Sudan. And I want to challenge the, the Sudanese people to maybe the civil society organization. We're not hearing anything about the civil society organization in Sudan. Mm. We're not hearing anything. Mm. Is this too powerful? Me, we are talking. We are hearing. So I think America, in the name of democracy, we know we have autocracy in several, in several places, but America can come and bring its might. All right. So what happens? So because America is a major power mm. that can influence peace. Mm. In the, Sudan. The resource control thing, that yeah. seems to be the under, the under yeah. <laughs> what happens to it? The resource control remains. Who controls the resources now, the resources in Sudan? External forces? External influence? They are using the boys. In as much as that will remain, do you ever think the, the conflict in, in Sudan will ever be resolved? That's what I said. Because that, that's a major, it's not only in Sudan. It's, it's everywhere. It's across almost all <laughs> African nations. Yeah. So if you bring it down to Nigeria here, you and I understand what is going on, that um, uh, there seems to be a Western interest, even in our natural resources. Uh, you take it down to uh, the DROC, the Democratic Republic of Congo, is still an issue. It's there. an issue. You take it to Kenya, you take it to Senegal, it's, an, it's still an issue there. So uh, is there no approach? The, the only approach is multi-party democracy. If America, you know, unfortunately, imperialism doesn't have human face. Mm. Imperialism is not a charitable organization. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Imperialism. Mm -hmm. That's America and its allies. They believe in what to go and take. My interest. My national interest. But the way out, if Sudan, if, if the international forces could allow Sudan to go multi-party democracy, for instance, other things will come to play. If that's a democratic process, maybe a popular guy will show up mm -hmm. and people will just vote for that person and things like that. Mm. I think that is the only way out. Even if there's a multi-party democracy, even if there's a new president in Sudan tomorrow, as I said, the nine will not vanish. It will still be there. It will still be there. External forces will still continue to play. So it depends on the leader who is sitting at any point in time that will not think about the national interests of Sudan. Mm. But unfortunately, 
General Abdul Fattah Boham and General Dagalo, they are not redeemers. They are not the way forward. But at least one thing you know, say can do for Sudan, put in place a kind of democracy, even allow General Boham, whatever, let him be a civilian president. But I think we also need to give it to General Baran, whether we mm -hmm. like it or not, mm -hmm. the way he has been able to hold Sudan uh, together uh, since Abashar, uh, you know, <laughs> was ousted and all that. Uh, we should give it to him, even if we try to look at him now that he's really not uh, the people's uh, leader that uh, is needed in Sudan. Uh, well, he has been holding forth. And, uh, okay, why did you not allow what led to this crisis? Yeah, because, because, because you didn't allow the Dagano boys to be incorporated to the army. So what are you, are you trying to say? Are you, <laughs> from your point of view, would you want to prepare the Dagano? <laughs> It's no, afraid. Would, 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 the average Sudanese probably <laughs> won't like the Gallo because we are told that the Gallo is very rich. <laughs> yeah. He's very rich in gold. Yeah, and yeah he if, sits on top of him. Uh, yeah, so if you allow him more, he may take all the gold resources from Sudan. <laughs> you know, so... <laughs> so the United States should, should empower General Fatah Bohan so they can deal with the Gallo. That's the way out. Hmm. To flush the Gallo to the corner. So that they can have a multi-party democracy. Mm. That is the way out in Sudan. That's our perspective. Seeing the world becoming protracted. <coughs> Empower General Fatah Boham to put in place whatever democratic process. We know, we know in most of these democratic process, they are not truly really democratic process. Mm. You see Telegraph from Washington, mm -hmm. and you know, before you know, the army will be there. That's mm. what they did in Egypt. See the US influence. That's what they did in Egypt. Egypt is that what is in Egypt. An average Egyptian is not interested in uh, the presidency of uh, Egypt because that uh, general Sisi is a product of American imperialism. Now, the so they can see let okay, I challenge America to replicate what they did in in, in, in Egypt, in Sudan, mm. and perhaps so uh, a multi-party democracy. Uh, no, let's so that there's some resources can see me the people, yeah. not just two people. Because the people do not count in this conflict. Now, the greatest fear for the average journalist now is uh, uh, let Sudan not turn to another Libya. It's almost turning to another Libya. That's the greatest fear. I mean, ever since uh, the U.S. Uh, came into the Libya issue and all that, that country has not known peace. It's unfortunate. As I said, in international relations, no, power, no permanent friend, permanent interest. Mm. It's so sad. No permanent friend, but permanent interest. Is the threats that come to play? What is Russia looking for, for instance, in, uh, in in Sudan? Not many kilometers away from uh, Sudan. They want to control. They want to be involved. They want to have the same spread of influence. What is calling the war between uh, America? Sorry, the the so-called Cold War between Washington and Benji is influence. I mean, the United is trying to control the uh, Asiatic powers. The Korea. Philippines, and the other day the Philippine president was in America. Mm. Uh, this guy, uh, I remember the name. I can't remember his name. Yeah, yeah. he's a former uh, in, uh, you know, in uh, Philippines. Mm. Was in the United States. Okay. Now, as so, we close this program mm. now, uh, what is, uh, let's look at, what is our interest in Africa? Because we talk about the Western interest. Unfortunately, the African Union is not even talking. <laughs> the EU. That is sad reality. Yeah. The African Union doesn't even have a say. It's, it's so sad. I don't remember now. The African Union is not pulling any weight. The African Union is, is I don't know, I, I don't, I've not seen what the African Union is doing. Anyway. Because, because we, we see, remember what uh, Echo Monk in, in Liberia. Mm. We, we, we remember what happened. Mm -hmm. Can't some African leaders come together and say, hey, let's right help now, Sudan they, they, to they, get to the promised land, so to say. The EU is not doing anything. Nothing. Anyway, uh, we have to oh. end the program here this afternoon, uh, African Discourse on Independent Television. And uh, perhaps when we return, uh, we just pray that uh, the war in Sudan, the crisis, uh, the uh, insurrection, you may want to say, uh, may go down so that uh, uh, we can have peace in Sudan, in Africa. So I want to leave you with a very big question. What should be our interest on the continent of Africa uh, we have talked about, we always talk about Western interests, <laughs> and uh, it's very, very sad to know that it is only in the continent of Africa that we always talk about Western interests. So what is our interest as a continent? <laughs> for us. Know, for us. For we as a people, what should be our interest? You know, so that's a very big question, and uh, I'll leave that as a rhetorical question now. 
uh, so that we can make time for another day. <laughs> I want to say a very big thank you to Nobuta Ibotaku for finding time to come on the show thank today. You. Africa Discourse of Independent Television. My name is Evan Sunokoge. Goodbye and God bless you.